Good morning folks, it's Monday and what I'm on with is getting a gas supply for my brazing hearth because if I'm going to finish that uh, drawbar by brazing the end on I need the heat, I need the gas on, right? And although I put all this in, I never finished it. It's one of those jobs I never finished. So what we've got here is we've got a half inch to three eighths adapter, which is going to get welded onto that bracket like that, and then there's going to be a pipe barb goes in there, and the pipe from the uh, torch, the gas pipe from the torch, screws into there. So. When we've done that, this is going to bolt down here on the, on the bottom like that, with that there, and the gas pipe's going to connect into it. And the gas barb is going to go off the other side. So there you go. Right, I'm going to crack on with this, get it welded up, and when I've got it on and fixed, I'll bring you back. Okay, bye for now, folks. And there it is, folks. That. When I've drilled two holes, bolts onto there like that. He said blinding you by pushing you into the... That bolts onto there like that. And that hose, which I pick up, and that hose, which I have now picked up, goes into this end of it. So that'll be nice and symmetrical. And then a piece of uh, orange gas hose comes out the end and will go to the gas bottle which will be in here temporarily uh, but later I'm going to put a gas valve on the wall and put the gas bottle outside in a box uh, which will be straight out that wall there and stand it on stand it on a on a paper in the garden and put a box over it Right, and then uh, I'll just have a gas valve on the wall and a long pipe to it, which is cool. So, I'll crack on with that, I'll get the holes drilled, and I'll bring you back when it's all nicely fitted. Bye bye now, bye bye now. Right folks, it's still Monday, but it's home time, and uh, Apart from another load of tidying up downstairs to find all these bits, that's what I've got done today. Some days you get loads done, some days you don't. But, this is going forward, because once this is working, I've then got a source of brazing, uh, which I can, <coughs> I've already got a source of brazing, I've, I can TIG braze, right? But I can't TIG braze this because I need to get the whole top of the thing hot so that I can fill the gap, uh, which is quite a lot, uh, with, with brass. So that if I uh, mill it down and it turns out to be getting close to the uh, to breakthrough point, it won't make any difference. So this is another string to the bow. It also gives me a quick flame, a quick very hot flame to heat things up with which at the moment, because I've got no oxycetylene, although I have got the bottles and the gear, uh, I've got no oxycetylene, and this is a, a very quick stopgap for heating stuff up, especially when the forge is not lit, which is most of the time. Right? And I mean, you wouldn't want to light the forge just to, just to heat something up that you could do with that. Right, that's it, folks. That's Monday done. That's Monday done. And... I've just got my internet connection on at the workshop, so I'm just going to see if I can log into this. I mean, I know this is this is a little bit bodgy, but look, it's a wireless router, and it's saying I'm on. So I'm just going to see if I can log into it with the uh, with my other phone that I use to control the GoPro. But if not, if not, never mind. Okay. Right, catch you all later. Catch you tomorrow for a Tuesday session. God, this workshop's a mess. I haven't finished my brew yet either. Oh, no, there's still good tea in there. Right, folks, see you tomorrow. Bye now. Good morning, people. Tuesday. 
and what's this you may ask? Well, last night I attempted to fit a new pump to our washing machine, which is a job I've done thousands of times on thousands of different washing machines. And uh, it decided it wasn't going to work and it decided it was going to leak. So I left it last night and went back to it this morning. Saw straight away why it wouldn't run because <clears throat> I'd plugged the... Uh, I'd only plugged one tag on, it's, t it's two tags in one in a little plug and I plugged it on on one side because you can't see it, it's dark in there. That's my excuse now, sticking to it. And the leak was just one of the hoses that wasn't seated properly, so I got that working. That's fine. And I decided I'm going to look at the door. Now the machine is a Garenyi, which is made in uh, Eastern Europe, shall we say. I'm not quite sure, it could be Estonia, but I'm not sure. And I got it because it had a five year warranty on it. And it's not been a bad machine, apart from one thing, the door. Now, when we had a problem with it and they came out and replaced the whole tub assembly because the tub bearings had gone and they couldn't get the pulley off. So they said, oh, it doesn't matter. We'll just replace the whole tub assembly. So we got a new tub assembly and bearings under warranty. And they said, oh, your door's broken. We'll replace that as well. Well, it broke again within two weeks. And if you look at the plastic here and how thick it is and the fact that the whole weight of the glass door hangs on that, on those pathetic little bits of plastic, you can see why it breaks. And I'm not paying 25 quid for another one just to have it break within a week or two. So what I've done is I've got a piece of wonderful checker plate and turned it into a steampunk washing machine. And it's going to be bolted through with some very big washers at the back. And hopefully it will be a lot stronger. So there you go. I'm also going to neaten that up and maybe make a little plate a little piece of tin just to cover that mess up but I don't know yet anyway I'm gonna crack on with this so I'm afraid apart from this there's nothing interesting going on today I have theoretically theoretically my internet connection at the workshop is now working but unfortunately I haven't time to sort it today so what I'm gonna to do tomorrow is cobble together a computer and connect it to that and uh, see if we can get on. I've put the uh, all the special passwords into there that should access allow me to access the network and it doesn't seem to be doing that at the moment so uh, I might just ring my oppo and at the other end and see if he can log into the uh, log into the router and see if he can set it. Right, that's it for now. I hate this sort of job. I'm getting quite good at doing mending the unmendable, fixing the unfixable. It's I looked I looked at buying a new door. This plastic moulding is twenty five quid up to forty five quid. But you have to get the one for the machine with the right art number on it and the art number on mine is 03 and I can't find a door for an art number 03 so there you go given the fact that I tried my hardest to correct source the correct pump and when the pump arrived it was sort of correct but it was an earlier model with a three screw fixing whereas mine was a later model which was a bayonet fitting but I managed to uh, to find three self-tapping screws and, and fix it with three screws because all the plastic moulding is there, of course. So I got that fixed, got that going. Uh, I don't know what was wrong with the old one. Uh, it, it appears that there's some sort of spring-loaded uh, linkage between the rotor and the actual magnet uh, part of the rotor, and it appeared to be broken. But why you should have that, I don't know, but there you go. Uh, I'm not going to get into a long diatribe about how crap everything is made today and how piss poor components are and the fact it must cost them about 30 quid to produce these machines. Right, okay, I'm going to crack on with this and if anything else happens interesting today I'll bring you back and record it but other than that, that's Tuesday wasted. Oh, I had to take my daughter's, I had to go down the street with the wife to take my daughter's smashed iPhone 
uh, into the into the car into the mobile phone shop and uh, shell out eighty quid to get that fixed. So there you go. It's been a great day today. Bye now. And there it is, folks. A steampunk washing machine. That's worked really well. It's a really good repair. Doesn't move up and down now, and it closes the door straight up instead of having to lift it and lift it back into position. The uh, the plastic moulding's too weak. It's not well made. It's not well made at all. But that has uh, that has bolted through in many places. It's bolted through those two. It's bolted through the hinges and also three other fixings with large washers on them. Perfect. Right. That's it for Tuesday. Tomorrow I'll get back on with what I got sidetracked onto yesterday. Bye for now. Good afternoon people. It's Wednesday and we are just working on gas fittings for regulators. We're back on this. We have a gas bottle. We have a regulator on it. We have an adjustable regulator on it at the moment, which is off my blow lamp, but I need to put a bigger uh, bigger pipe connection on it, so I'm going to sort that out, and uh, then we're going to go for a light and see how she works. Uh, the, uh, the washing machine door repair on the Garenier went very well. The wife's very pleased with it. She likes the aluminium checker plate look. We've got one or two things... Uh, of broken plastic that mended with the aluminium checker plate. If anybody's interested, uh, I, I didn't go into very much detail on that repair, but I know that door failure on Garenia washing machines is quite a problem, and that is a permanent fix. So if anybody's interested, uh, give me a shout, and I'll I'll put up a more detailed uh, how-to sort of thing. But but it's a good fix. And it's permanent, and that there's no need to do it with checker plate. You could do it with uh, a piece of steel and paint it, or a piece of galv, or, or whatever. Just a piece of aluminium and paint it, although aluminium is harder to paint. Uh, I'm still trying to. I'm still trying to get my internet to connect. Uh, I'm messing about with it. Uh, the chap at the other end, who is an old mate of mine, is uh, also on with it, but. Uh, I've sent him a message and I assume he's working on it, so he hasn't got back to me. So that's what's going on today. It's lovely and warm in the workshop. Right, I'll bring you back when there's something more interesting to show you. Bye for now. Well, people, I think we can call this a resounding success. Now, you're probably not going to be able to hear me uh, when I start this blow lamp, but I'm just going to show it to you. The gas is on, the pilot's running, Start the compressor and then you probably won't be able to hear me. And then I'll show you the flame. The low flame. That's a resounding success. So now I can uh, have a go at bracing the end of my uh, drawbar for the milling machine. And we're almost getting away from being sidetracked. There you go.
this is something that I should have finished when I was when I did all this to it, and I didn't. I just didn't finish it. It is, in fact, if we turn it round and find the badge, it is, in fact, an old days. Uh, I think it's an old day. Yeah, it's an old day. William Alday and Company Limited, Stowell Park and Seven Worcester. And it's a proper brazing half, but it's rotating. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice, eh? Right. Now I'm going to have a brew. And then I'm going to set up this uh, drawbar and see if we can braise it. Okay, folks. Bye for now. Well, folks, the uh, the brazing hat is a uh, a success in a way, but at the moment I can't get that piece of metal hot enough. I need to build a fire brick wall behind it because the uh, the heat is all going all over the place. I've had it glowing dull red, but not hot enough to braze. So I'm going to work on that. I thought I'd just show you my uh, superb 1950s. Brazing lenses, they're really nice. I take my glasses off when I use them, but they're really nice. And they're, uh, they give you a beautiful clear view. I've also got some of these, of course, but they, they need new elastic. But the brazing goes like a train, it gets really hot, but not hot enough without uh, some fire bricks behind it to, uh, to get that hot enough. So I'm going to have a dig around and see what I've got in extra fire bricks. I've got some more fire bricks outside and uh, and then I'm going to set it up again and have another go. Right? And if I can't get it to braise I'll weld it. But we've advanced the tech level because I've now got the brazing half uh, working and I can heat up uh, pieces of steel to bend them instead of bending everything bloody cold which is uh, a pain in the ass and you get, you get piss poor bends anyway. Uh, when I've got not got the forge lit, of course. Uh, if I had the forge lit, I could take that up to red heat in the forge and then just stick it in the braze now to braze it. And there you go. I haven't got it lit and I'm not lighting it now because it's, uh, it's well gone three o'clock. It's lovely and warm in here. It's too bloody warm in here now. I've been sitting over that forge, over that brazen house. And uh, I'm just having a brew. And then I'm going to find some uh, fire bricks and crack on. I'll bring you back if I get to it today. Bye now. Here we are folks. There's a bit more advanced setup. We'll see if that works. And if not, I'm not bothered. I'll just bloody weld it on the round the top and that'll do. But, we've got this going. So we've advanced the tech level. I need a loop onto there, which I'm going to make now. There's a, there's a bar under here that you can't see. You probably can see it. There it is. And I'm going to put a loop on there, like a just a piece of round bar bent round that, and hang in there just to hang the torch on. Because it's it, that's all right, but if it's down there, you can actually see if you've left the pilot on. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm really pleased with that. I got that. This went back to flame fast, and got converted from. I presume it was town gas to propane or butane. It'll run on either. You need a different regulator because it's a slightly different pressure for the two different gases. But this is jetted to run on either. Uh, and it was, I think it was just short of 100 quid. It's 90 quid or something to get it all converted and reconditioned. So uh, there you go. it works beautifully. Flame fast, still in business after all these years and a real nice company to deal with as well there you go right I'm going to finish my brew and I'm going to crack on with this and see if I can get it done see if it works ok bye now well that was odd folks uh, I can't get it hot enough at the end of the day it's almost almost there but the actual shaft uh, below the nut on the on the end is glowing red hot and is easily at brazing temperature but the nut that I'm trying to braise is, is considerably colder than that and doesn't seem it just seems to stop getting hotter uh, I could have turned it upside down and braised round it but that isn't the point 
So then I had a then I had a failure because I didn't realise I'd knocked the regulator and turned the regulator down. Uh, but basically, uh, it's not a failure really because the success is we've got the brazing half going. We know pretty much what its limit is. There's a lot of metal in that. There's a lot of metal in that uh, in that bar, and it isn't the ideal thing to have the first go with. So I shall experiment with it. But anyway, the brazing house is going and going well. Uh, I have in my possession various different types of gas bottles, like butane and propane and uh, patio gas. I've got a full patio gas which somebody gave me, which I'm going to use up by putting different regulators on. So that's cool. Uh, other than that, I've put a beautiful blue on it. I've, uh, I've just dumped it in some veggie oil and left it to cool and it's put a really nice blue on it. I'll just go see if it's cool now and then uh, if it is I'll show you it. Like only days ago I was wearing these trousers. How was that for a blue? Nice even blue. It was bloody hot though. Covid again. Right, that's it for today folks. Uh, I'm going to call that it, I'm going to weld that up tomorrow and then we'll put the milling machine back together and we'll uh, we'll mill two flats on it. There you go. Right, bye for now. Good morning people. It's Thursday, lunchtime. And it's working now. Good morning people. Just lost a battery there and to put another battery. I've done that, I've welded it up. Now I know you're all screaming, that's what you should have done in the first place. Yes, I know it is. But it wouldn't if I'd done that in the first place, we wouldn't have had that wonderful adventure with the uh, 12 inch long flame on the brazing house, would we? And now the brazing house is going and any metal work I do, I've got a quick, easy heating it up method. So that was my original. Right, that's welded up. I'm now going to set it up in the milling machine and mill two flats on it. Right, which means putting the uh, milling machine back together as a horizontal mill, but that won't take me long. Uh, so I'm going to crack on with that, and uh, I'll bring you back when I can show you it. Now, I could do with a tidy up today, but I'm not going to have a tidy up today because I'm going to have a tidy up tomorrow. Because tomorrow is going to be a short day because I'm going off at two o'clock to York to pick my daughter up from university and bring her back for the weekend so uh, I should be leaving about probably leave about two and uh, that'll be the end of the day so tomorrow morning I'm going to have a big tidy up and if there's anything interesting happens I'll show you or at least I'll show you a tidy workshop okay bye for now folks right folks just thought I'd show you the setup on the uh, horizontal mill. I've got a nice broad cutter in which is easily broad enough to uh, do the whole job and I've uh, started taking a cut. As you can see I've got the uh, device mounted across the uh, across the direction of travel rather than along with it. I square it up by putting a square in the vise and taking it back to that face there and that's square with the machine. Uh, and I've got just got a, an engineer's jack underneath, underneath there, just nipped up, just to support it, just to take the cutting load off it. And I mean, I'm I'm not going mad on this. I'm going, uh, I'm I'm taking fairly uh, fairly fine cuts off it because I don't want to grant through it. So I'm just going to carry on with this now. As you can see, I've taken a few cuts off already. It's going very nicely. I'm using cutting oil because I've got no. Uh, I've got no white water in this machine as yet. Uh, I thought I had, but I must have taken it out when I moved it. 
stop it slopping all over the place and cleaned out the tank. Uh, and I thought it had some in, but it doesn't. So there you go. Right, I'll bring you back when I've done it. Bye for now. Right, folks. Nice flat job done. I'm not going any wider than that because I don't want to compromise the wall thickness of that piece of metal, which should really be solid, but is actually hollow. But never mind. That's enough. They don't have to be bang tight. Just thought I'd mention a couple of things about me setup here. This is a typical me rough and ready setup. Right, for parallels in the vise, I used a couple of nuts. You see that one's fallen over, but there it was set on top of them. Right, and then at this side I've got an engineer's jack, and I've put a flat keyway key on it, a uh, half moon key on it, to line the flat up to make sure the flat is parallel with that flat, and it's all worked very well. So there we go, horizontal mill job done. So I'm now going to move on to the next step, which is making that peg fit in the hole, that uh, dowel fit in the hole. But first, I'm going to have a break, because it's just about three o'clock. Bye for now. And there we are, folks. We're halfway there. Having said that, I've put this on to check the fit of the, of the peg. The peg goes in. It doesn't go in very far. I'm not particularly happy with the alignment of the holes. I've cleaned the paint out the holes. I'm going to have another go because I've got to take it off again to make a gasket for it which I'm going to do next. But that's it. We know that the second piece which is that down there we know that fits because uh, we took that off and that's still got its that's still got its T-bolts in it. So that's all uh, ready to go on. That's, yeah, that's still got its, its fixing bolts in it. So that's ready to go on. And then, when I've done that, what I need to do is bring the table up underneath it and make a cradle for it to sit in so that I can put the cradle onto the table, slide it underneath, lift it up, take the bolts out and then bring it out onto the cradle and lower it down because whilst the two bits are easy enough to handle you don't really want to be taking them uh, off and on and off and on every time you do it and if you make a cradle you can hold the whole thing at once uh, and then I suppose I'd have to slide it on, yeah slide it onto the hydraulic bring the hydraulic platform in here slide it onto the hydraulic platform bring it out and lower it down or keep it higher up right well there we go folks it's on the drawbar's made the drawbar's finished and it's on with hindsight at this drawbar I should probably have taken that bit off there but it makes no never mind because that's far wider than the jaws of the adjustable spanner so there you go so that's it all that messing about just to make a drawbar this is what happens when you don't have a wide range of uh, round pieces of steel I need to get my hands on some short bits of round bar some scrap ends of round bar Right, well it's four o'clock, so I'm going to do a bit more, uh, but tomorrow I'm going to mainly tidy up, although I may not, I, what I may do now is just check this out and uh, and tap a gasket out. So I'll show you, if I get if I get it done in reasonable time, I'll show you, I'll show you doing that. I've shown you tapping gaskets out before, but it's quite a nice little job, so uh, I'll show you it. I had to check. I had to take quite a lot off that pin. Uh, I took it first of all. I went into the look the Dremel, the the littlest Dremel. First of all, I went into the uh, into the hole with the with the little grindstone on the end of the Dremel because I could see that it had been damaged. There was two high spots on it. Took those out, cleaned all the paint and crap out, right, and then and then tried to peg in, and there was no way it's going in. I've actually had to take. The, uh, what I measured it at was uh, 10.66 was what the hole measured at and 11, the pin was 11 dead, absolutely bang on 11 mil. So uh, there's no way that hole was 11 mil, no way. So I had to take it out and, and, and basically what it looks like to me is although the, 
the machine is metric they're still using a um, it was still using an imperial pin but there you go I sized it with a drill bit and I tried a drill bit in that hole and there was no way a drill bit was going to go in that hole so I don't know what the hell the code was but there you go anyway I'm going to take it off now and I'll knock a gasket out see you in a bit right chaps I nearly forgot well, I've only just got enough gasket paper so I'm going to have to order some more tonight but Start off, get a piece of gasket paper that's big enough. This is just big enough. Right? Find two holes in the casting. Ball pin, small ball pin, tap, 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 tap. And you'll find that the paper will just drop out here. Right? Then, tap your way all around the edge. And you'll find. Carry on tapping on the other edge. Oh, there's some more holes there, which is all fixing hole. That's a fixing hole. A quick turn like that, and then. And that's put the. Uh, Another one here. There we go. And now we've got the the peg hole there. Inside. Turn that round so you can't see what a mess I've made of the paintwork.
go. As you can see, there and there, it was only just big enough, this piece of paper. But I think you'll find, apart from the damaged paintwork, that's a pretty good gasket. So there we go. So that's how you make gaskets, folks. I think I've shown you this before, actually. Anyway. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Right, well, I don't know what time it is, but it must be getting on a bit. I think it's probably time I headed off home. 16.46, yes it is. Alright then, that wraps it up for Thursday. Catch you later, bye bye now. Good morning people, it's Friday. And on the way home last night, I had a revelation. I've made this gasket beautifully out of gasket paper. And I forgot that my very good friend Richard Kirkman had sent me in one of his lovely packages a uh, whole heap of uh, neoprene gasket material. Which is here. There we are. And I can make a gasket out of that. Now rather than tap it out, I don't know if you can tap this out, that's just, I would, can't see why not. I'll just use this as a pattern and cut it out. But uh, given the fact that this may be taken on and off quite a few times, it's probably better to have a more resilient gasket. The only thing that worries me is that the thickness of this gasket will change the mesh of the gears. Uh, and they might not fully mesh, but I shall check that after I've made it. Right, so I'm here this morning, it's just gone 11 o'clock, and uh, what I've got scheduled for today is a tidy up, uh, because I'm away at 2 o'clock to York. So I've got the boiler alight and the heating's on, so what I'm going to do next is go outside, pick up hundreds of bloody windfall apples, then probably chainsaw some uh, some more wood up because I've got some wood outside outside that's been drying all year uh, under a canvas and it's now time to cut it up and split it and bring it in and then I'm going to move into here and uh, and do a tidy up and when I do a tidy up what I think I'll do just as an experiment is I'll put the camera up high on this uh, metal beam up here on a magnetic mount and uh, I'll do a time lapse of me tidying the workshop, which may or may not be terrifically boring, but I'll see how it works out, and I may not put all of it on. But generally speaking, it takes me about an hour to to an hour and a half to get the place spotless again. But that's what I'm going to do now. So I'll leave you with that, and I'll come back to you when I'm ready to start tidying up inside. Bye now. <laughs>